Thank you, um, the Governor, for this introduction and for inviting me and team. Um, uh, I just want to uh, acknowledge that this presentation stems from a research project called um, Beyond the Spherical Solution, the Australian contribution making the Sydney uh, Opera House. Um, and uh, uh, the research team comprises myself and Dr. Paolo Stacchi from the University of Sydney and Professor Tumbesi from the uh, Ecole Polytechnique Federal de Lausanne. Um, when you read the statement uh, and the reason why the Sydney Opera House is a uh, World Heritage Site from the uh, website of UNESCO, you can identify not only the word design, but you can appreciate the UNESCO um, recognize that the significance of the, of the building relies also in the construction process and the engineering achievements. Uh, but despite of, sorry, oh, wait, um, despite of this statement, um, often the contribution of the general contractor Hornibrook is often overlooked in the uh, appraisal of uh, the heritage values of the Sydney Opera House. Um, this is not just me saying this, and it's not even the uh, literary review that we conducted before starting this, um, this project. Uh, by reading all the extensive publications on the Opera House, you can understand that there were challenges and complexity on site, but you can't really get a grasp and understanding what actually happened on site. Uh, this is, again, it's not just me, the literature review, but it's the same structural engineer itself over Arup in 1973 declaring that everything that happened in the saga of the Opera House, the resigning of uh, the architect of Hudson, uh, all the, the budget skyrocketing, um, overshadow the inventiveness and uh, the ingenuity applied into the uh, site. So when we found uh, in the New South Wales State Archive and Records the 5,300 shop drawings issued by Bornebrook, uh, so by the general contractor, uh, we thought that maybe that was our chance to really link uh, what was the statement of the UNESCO in terms of heritage, uh, uh, in terms of construction as a keyword, uh, and the local ingenuity um, creating and, and uh, available um, for the complexion of uh, the building. Shop drawings are not easy beast to, a uh, difficult beast to understand. Uh, there are a lot of details, um, and you have to co cross-referencing all the information presented with other sources. So this is what we've been doing in the last two years. Um, the construction pictures, the wonderfully taken by um, uh, Max Dupain, together with the uh, minutes of all the meetings happened on site. So by cross-referencing these uh, sources, we could actually understand what happened on site and understanding the value of the labor and the local know-how in the uh, completion of, of the building. From a point of view of challenges, uh, this, and I'm referring to this wonderful idea that I can see in the monitor here about having a digital archive, uh, all the sources about the construction process of the Opera House are placed in different locations in Sydney. Some of them are actually in London as well in the Arupa archive. But here, there are at least four archives that contain all the data that we need to use to reconstruct digitally the process uh, of the making of the Opera House. So when we start digging and digitalizing the, um, the shop drawings, we realized that there were three major things that the that Hornibrook, uh, the three major things that Hornibrook solved. Um, the first one is what you expect from a construction 
company, which is the site organization. You imagine that that's a given. But then we start realizing that um, it wasn't just, Hornibrook wasn't just a recipient of information from uh, the Oberarup, the structural engineer, or Goodson, the architect. But it was actually, in fact, someone that collaborated intensively in the design agency of the building. And the design agency of the construction company affected two major um, subject components. Uh, one is the erection procedures. And when we were talking about procedures, we didn't find just the schedule of the erection of the 2,400 elements erected into the roof of the Opera House, but we also found the invention of needles, erection needles, steel elements that designed locally by Ornibrook, sped up the process of the, um, uh, of the construction itself. The uh, other um, major um, sets of drawings are related to the formwork, where really the ingenuity of um, Ornibrook, who was a, build, uh, who was a bridge uh, designer and um, a general contractor, uh, mainly uh, specialized in bridge engineering, uh, took um, the majority uh, of uh, its effort. So let, let's have a look at these drawings. The drawings are actually quite perishable. Uh, we are talking about A0 panel in pencil. This is a drawing of one of the formwork system, what it was called bed. Um, this bed was uh, creating five segments. And uh, as you can see, there is a lot of cancellation and uh, there is a lot of rethinking. Um, then beautiful drawings about the site organization. Often what you don't realize how is not just that Opera House was a complex building, but the site was a complex one because it was basically um, just um, surrounded by water with a very tiny space left for storage in the casting yard, which was the factory to making uh, the 2,500 segments. Um, and then the beautiful uh, bespoke housework. If we talk about intangible heritage of a tangible building, then we can often refer to false work, to everything that has been forgotten, everything that has been demolished, but it was necessary to the erection of the building itself. This was all designed locally. Um, so we start lay down all these drawings into the timeline. And we start discovering something really interesting that unpacked the idea that Hornibrook was also a designer into the process of construction of the Opera House. Um, when we zoom in into this, uh, what we've done is like a simple color analysis, um, uh, assigning one color to a specific task or a specific component that that shop drawing is uh, refer referring to. The first thing we discovered is actually Ornibrook started working on the Opera House before signing the contract. Arup and Ornibrook got together to decide together how to build the Opera House. And that informed all the decision that over Arup to afterwards. So there is a, we discovered this pre-planning phase, and we're talking about 10 or 12 drawings um, that are the ones that demonstrate this mutual exchange of knowledge between the structural engineer and uh, the uh, architect, sorry, and, and the construction um, and the general contractor. The other thing that we realized by this color analysis is that the frantic problem solving that occurred throughout the construction. There's no a single color that is synchronous to the other. That means that if they were issuing some drawings for the tile lids and then they had to stop because the, another problem happened on site and then they had to issue more drawings on other issues again. So there is no a solid pattern and all a solid change of color throughout this um, in, in this representation. And the other thing which I found most interesting, as you can see, 
Uh, Ornibrook never stopped issuing drawings in the overall time frame of the sales construction. You would expect, if this was a construction, a, a simple uh, general uh, construction job, at some point the general contractor stopped issuing the drawings, the shop drawings, and start working on site. This issuing, this problem solving never stopped. Um, until the end of uh, stage two. All this, I should have said before, this is the time frame from the stage two, which is the sale construction of the opera, uh, of the opera house. Then we start asking ourselves clarity of the drawing, analyzing the clarity of the drawing, the structure of the drawing, the type of information, where these drawings uh, designed to convey an information within Ornibrook, or they were um, designed and communicate to communicate the know-how to the architect to um, uh, or to the structural engineer and by doing so we've done we managed to reconstruct the workflow and uh, between uh, the structural engineer and the uh, and the Hornibrook and we realized something that of course was already in the idea of the pre-planning but we saw that um, all the drawings issued by the gen by uh, uh, over Aru, by the structural engineer uh, were um, decided after the first drawings of Ornibrook. So it's not the structural engineering indicating what to do to the construction uh, company, but it's the way um, around. Um, and I think that was quite interesting to, to note um, and when, when we really appreciate the contribution of the um, uh, general contractor. So by connecting all this data and uh, uh, digitalizing uh, the uh, archival, uh, the key uh, at this point, the key uh, drawings, we managed to ground um, all the uh, pictures uh, taken by, the construction picture taken by um, Max Dupain. Now we know what those pictures represent in detail. We know what's going on in that picture. We are able to, to write extensive caption saying this is what you're looking by looking at this, at, at this picture. Uh, and then, um, sorry, giving away too much. And then we also managed to debunk a myth, the myth of the spherical solution. Every time you read about this, the construction of the Opera House, you read that the, there's a eureka moment where Utzon or Arup or both decided to borrow a spherical geometry to increase, um, to increase the um, customability of the elements and to make it sure that the fabrication process was, you know, up to speed and all the elements were fabricated by a little amount of um, small uh, and not heavily engineered molds or, for, or formwork. The reality is shown in these diagrams where you see that uh, blocks that are, or ashlers or components that are identical are very few. Uh, so the complexity in, uh, of the work and the, uh, the process went beyond the spherical uh, solution. Um, and then we focused on um, the molds, one of the molds, and we reconstructed, we took the drawings and uh, we reconstructed digitally one of these molds. Um, the parallelism here was the idea that if uh, you are 3D modeling, um, one of these beds, you're encountering pretty much on the same difficulties or the same issues that people on site back then might have experienced. So we use the 3D modeling to really understand the complexity of what happened on site just by harvesting the data from the shop drawings and uh, representing them in a, 3D, uh, in a 3D way. And then just to celebrate what Ornibrook um, wanted to uh, present, uh, wanted to achieve. We reconstructed, thanks to the meetings of um, uh, the meetings, uh, minutes of the meetings, the process, the overall process, just a tiny bit, 
for five segments of the old ribs. The longest ribs in the um, opera house are 14 elements, 14 segments. These are only five, this is bed A. Uh, but all the things that you see in this uh, video are actually Australian invention. This is all the idea of using bulkheads, for instance, to divide singular elements. And the bulkheads are actually the only things that you can still see when you appreciate the, um, the, the from the inside the sales of, of the Opera House. But all this um, series of um, tasks and the overall process, for us, it was really um, the best way to link, finally, uh, the statement of the UNESCO in terms of construction as a heritage value of this building to uh, the building itself. Thank you.